Hello, it's John Milburn for Laws 19038, and this is a general discussion in relation to the results of the first assessment and some discussion in relation to the second and final assessment. Firstly, in relation to the first assessment, overall, I thought the standard was very good. Um, for your information, I did award two high distinctions, three distinctions, five credits, eight passes, and three fails for a total of 21. I have provided you with detailed notes for those of you who've requested your papers be returned to you. Uh, if you wish um, to have those, please send me an email at johnm1492 at hotmail.com.au. Otherwise, I'll just provide some general comments. Um, when quoting legislation in, for case law, please um, mark it in italics and um, do try to use the words um, that you've got at your disposal wisely. Um, even though it seems a lot of words that you have, uh, please don't be tempted to add in padding. So I'd, I'd really like it to be substance. In terms of question number one, ecological sustainability, um, where I was uh, looking for some additional commentary on the whole was uh, while you were able to identify the various factors that made up ecological sustainability, I was wondering some thing for, about some things and hoping that you might provide some comments. For example, um, should weight be attributed to any one of the factors more than others? Um, and if so, why? And can you support that by reference to case law or um, commentaries? From a planning perspective, um, you might have considered issues such as intergenerational equity, the precautionary principle, and issues regarding conservation of biological diversity. Some of you picked up on the fact that you could also make some comment in relation to the Commonwealth EPBCA, uh, some bonus points for that as well. In relation to the second question, in uh, dealing with strategic statutory planning, incremental strategic analysis and rational comprehensive planning, most have provided some good answers, but on the whole, relatively clinical answers in terms of, well, here's what it is, um, here's the, the topic or the, the phrase, and here's what it means, full stop. We're really looking to go beyond um, essentially a cut and paste. If you do cut and paste, have it referenced, and most of you were very good at that. But I'd like you to try to explain what you're um, saying in perhaps a more conversational style. So you might, for example, recite Section 8 of the Sustainable Planning Act and say, well, look, here's, here's what the, sec the, action, uh, the Act says, here's what's contained in the section, but then go on to say, essentially, what that means is this. So you can treat your writing in some ways as if you're trying to explain it to someone that is a difficult concept to someone and you're trying to explain it in a simpler manner as possible. So that's what I'd like to see. Um, in relation to that question, um, I was looking perhaps for some commentary in relation to uh, the state planning instruments generally, um, state planning regulatory provisions, re regional plans, state planning policies, etc. So many of you uh, confined your response purely to the local planning instrument level. Um, some overarching uh, state level analysis might have been worthy of at least a comment. Incremental strategic analysis and uh, rational comprehensive planning. Um, most of you made a good fist of it um, and difficult sort of concepts, but um, uh, most I was happy with those answers. Where I was probably looking for a little bit of um, extra credit was in relation to things like what do planners use in practice and um, has there been a shift in focus? Is there a preference uh, between planners? Can the methods be used in conjunction with each other? Things of that nature. So you can glean from that that what I'm looking for when you come to write assignment number two is something more than just a simple statement of, of the factual issues. I'm looking you to critically analyse that and perhaps ask, ask and then answer some questions that might be of interest to the reader. Number three, dealing with um, Commonwealth Government um, and its role in planning and developing capital cities. Most of you picked up on COAG, some of you picked up on the National Urban Policy, but there was also the um, uh, Productivity Commission Research Report and the 2010 Sustainable Population Strategy. Um, most of you picked up on the role in terms of providing 
infrastructure. Many of you made reference to Infrastructure Australia, which was great, um, but uh, not many of you went a little further and identified how it is that the states are funded in terms of infrastructure development more specifically. I'm not saying that you needed all of these things, um, but these are the sorts of questions and comments that we'd like to see raised in a paper of this sort. IDAS, um, most of you got the basics right. I mean, I guess it's all, it's pretty easy to cut and paste what the steps relating to um, uh, the IDAS is. <clears throat> but I wanted a little bit more. Um, so things like, uh, why did it come into existence? Uh, what's your assessment of the effectiveness of the IDAS program? Should the um, assessment manager consider suitability of development against planning instruments? And if so, um, in what order, to what priority, what weight should be given? And it gave you an opportunity, even though it was covered in a later question, to perhaps just introduce the meaning of and the role of concurrence agencies um, and uh, why those referral agencies and uh, concurrence agencies are uh, uh, relevant in the proceedings. Impact assessable development. Um, there could have been a contrast here between impact accessible developments and code accessible applications. Many of you got that right, um, but many uh, could have gone on and asked the question, well, why is it necessary to differentiate between them anyway? And um, why is it that some uh, developments are impact accessible in some councils, yet code accessible in other councils? So is there any reason why the same application should be treated differently from place to place throughout Queensland. So these are the sorts of issues that you could have identified and perhaps offered an opinion. Now, some of you may say, well, we've been taught not to put in our opinion. Uh, law's a little different because law is all about arguing a position. Um, now, it may be that um, uh, I propose an argument, a very simple argument to say, red is the best color for a car. Now, you might disagree and the whole aim of the exercise in that scenario is to put forward logical, sensible arguments to support a proposition. So that's what law is all about and that's why I do invite you to um, raise arguments or in, put forward your position wherever possible. Appeal rights. Um, obviously most of you identified that the Planning and Environment Court is the appropriate appeal destination. Um, I would like to have seen some commentary in relation to the difference between applicant appeals and submitter or objector appeals. And a note that submitter appeals is only relevant in relation to impact accessible applications. You could have gone on and explained things like, if you do launch an appeal, uh, do you, uh, is it up to you to prove your case? And the answer is yes, of course. But to what degree? What is the um, burden of proof, what is the level of proof, and in a civil jurisdiction such as this, it is the balance of probabilities. Many of you did correctly identify the Building and Development Resolution uh, Committee, Dispute Resolution Committee, as an alternative to litigation, so well done for that. And then finally, most of you did well in terms of answering the question regarding definitional matters of um, concurrence agencies, etc. All right, so that's the um, um, general comments. Now, if I can borrow some comments from uh, predecessor, Dr. Lawson Smith, where I can see from previous notes, he made reference to poor referencing practices. That's probably the case here. I haven't stressed, emphasized, or stressed um, referencing, and I haven't um, down marked anyone for what I believe to be poor referencing. My main concern was to ensure that there was no plagiarism um, so that at least it's referenced. Now, if I can say that my preference in terms of referencing is the, the type of referencing that we see in case law and also legal texts. So to give a good example, if you look at um, Bates Environmental Law in Australia, you'll see that the way he has referenced is by the use of footnotes, not in notes. Um, it's not a Harvard style of referencing, but it's just that that footnotes, I think, um, and you see that in cases as well. So being a lawyer, that's what I'm used to. That's what I prefer to see, but I'll leave it for your good judgment to determine what you might do for assignment number two. Some answers were a little short, um, a little too much to the point and nothing more. 
Other answers uh, were a bit too long and there was some evidence of padding. So just be aware that for the second assessment, I'm looking for more than just a cut and paste. Uh, be careful about plagiarism. Um, I won't say that people were getting close to the mark, but look at the, you look at your Turnitin scores and uh, make an assessment as to whether you have appropriately um, uh, referenced material that should be referenced. Now, for the second assignment, um, obviously all of you have made your way to the Department of Environment um, website and considered very carefully the um, referral uh, matters that are um, at the Commonwealth level. And I'm sure that you've made your way also, and, and this is where you should have started, at the Queensland Government Department of State Development Infrastructure and Planning website. And you'll see the um, uh, Coordinator General's um, overview of the project and the ultimate um, conclusions that were arrived at there. There is, of course, an extraordinary amount of reading um, in relation to it, and your task is to glean through that. You do have the advantage of looking at the summary of the report, and that um, uh, would be, to my mind, the starting point. Um, go then to the full report and take your analysis from there. Don't forget, of course, to look at the Commonwealth Minister's um, um, uh, results as a result of this being declared a controlled action and the uh, conditions that were imposed there. Um, you will see, of course, that um, this is um, one where the decision was made uh, in conjunction with um, state and federal levels through the bilateral agreement. All right. Um, now, the, the report, of course, is very bulky, and your job is to locate, extract, and summarise or pray see the most important sections. So do that in a way that the reader will understand logically what you're saying and follow from, from that. Um, if you are in any doubt about your ability to communicate this um, easily, let me offer this suggestion, as I did for a number of students. Keep your sentences short. If you do that, you're at less risk of tripping over yourself, so to speak, in terms of the words that you use. Many of the sentences were too long, too convoluted, and contained a number of um, concepts that really ought to have been separated. Sometimes you can start with short paragraphs and lead into um, uh, the, the topic from there. It's really important to try to engage your reader and sometimes using short, sharp sentences in relatively short paragraphs gives them an opportunity to understand quickly what's going on and then you can develop and flesh it out from there. But work on the assumption that the reader has no prior knowledge of what it is that you wish to say. So set the scene and then follow up with the more detail, referencing, of course, all the way through. That's my suggestion. Now, some of the very best marks that I awarded for assignment one didn't follow that format, so um, I'm not saying you have to, but what I am suggesting is that if in doubt, it's a relatively safe way to go. Shorten the sentences, keep it nice and tight, and look at it from the perspective of the reader and say, if I was reading this and I didn't know anything about it, would I be able to understand what's going on? So really important in terms of how you approach assessment piece number two. All right, um, so there's a number of questions, of course, um, in relation to the Ella Bay Resort project. Um, there is a very useful um, uh, commentary from Mr. Barry Bro, Queensland um, Coordinator General, in terms of the role of the Coordinator General, and uh, you might be able to use that in, in terms of uh, providing uh, some statements for this question. Uh, when considering the matter of environmental impact statement, I'll refer you back to the excellent presentation of Mr. Phil Jeston, industry expert in that regard. And um, when it comes to criticisms in relation to the overall effectiveness of the EIA as a regime under EPBCA or otherwise, have a look at Bates' commentary. It's very good and it identifies some practical and sensible arguments that might be raised. Don't be afraid to add your commentary or your opinion in terms of some of those criticisms that, that have been raised. As you can tell, I'm looking for more than just you reciting what you've found. I want you to give some critical thought to that 
analyse it, think about it, give the reader something to be interested in. In terms of the Vegetation Management Act, um, now there's a lot of material uh, available from various sources in relation to this new legislation that's come in. Um, I do want you to talk about the reforms. Um, you might consider a number of reforms, but not all of the reforms. Um, so probably I expect that you would select four or five different topics within the um, uh, 2012 material to uh, 2013 material to select by way of commentary for the new reforms. Uh, just looking at my notes, um, obviously you talk about the new mapping system. I would talk about the new, um, uh, the reintroduction of the defence provision of section 24, uh, etc. All right, um, put in some examples as well. Now, the next question is part B, dealing with Ella Bay um, resort project. And in that regard, of course, I've referred you to uh, uh, those places where you should start your um, analysis. All right, I'm sorry there's not a lot of specific detail, but I hope that what I have uh, indicated to you is of some assistance. Um, so if there's no questions, I'll um, stop recording at this stage. And I do look forward to your papers. Please make sure they're on time. If you can't meet the deadline, please at least apply in advance. Uh, I really won't be considering applications for an extension of time if they come in after the event. All the best. Thanks.